The most important part of the Dubsonian telescope is the primary mirror. It determines the amount of light and thus the clarity of everything that the telescope will point out. The tailgate holds the primary mirror. It is entirely made of stainless steel because it needs to be as stiff as possible. It is the hardest part to make of the telescope due to the columnation triangles. Here is me cutting the triangles. Next I had to measure and cut the structural stainless steel pieces that would make up the tailgate itself. I had learned to TIG weld years ago and it came in handy when it came to welding the pieces of the tailgate together. Now I had to tap the holes for the culmination bolts. These three bolts hold the primary mirror together and their placement was extremely important. Everything on the interior of the telescope needed to be painted black to reduce light reflection. The parts for the tailgate are finished and now it's time to construct the parts for the secondary cage. The hardest parts of the secondary cage were to make the rings. There are two of them and they must be cut perfectly circular. The only way to do that is by using a router connected to a jig. It took several passes to cut the rings from a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood. After the rings were cut, I had to drill the notches for the secondary cage struts. The finished secondary rings. Next to the culmination triangles, these were the most challenging parts to make. Final parts to make for the secondary cage were the secondary cage struts. I had to cut four of those out of a one diameter inch aluminum tube. Now on to construction of the parts for the mirror box. Parts were cut out of the three quarter inch plywood and glued and nailed together. I just had to make sure the tailgate correctly fit into the mirror box before proceeding. The key to a good mirror box is structural integrity. I had to cut quite a few supports and they were glued and nailed into the box to make sure it did not warp over time due to the weight of the primary mirror. Finally a top cover was glued to the mirror box. This held the sides perfectly square but allowed light to get through to the primary mirror. I had to make truss tube connectors of which there are 8 from scratch. The truss tubes hold the primary mirror box and the secondary mirror box together at the proper distance which is determined by the focal length of the primary mirror. Once the stock was cut up into eight cubes, I drilled one and one quarter inch holes to fit these truss tubes. One tricky part was using the horizontal bandsaw to cut three fourths of the way through the connector so a portion of the block could be tightened against the truss tube. I then used a router table to round off the edges of all the truss tube connectors. Finally, I had to make a series of cuts and then remove materials so that the truss tube connectors would tighten against the truss poles instead of the mirror box. One mistake I made was ordering the wrong size altitude bearings. I ordered 20 inch instead of 22 inch. My father works with epoxy and we came up with the idea of adding one inch of epoxy to the outside of the bearings to get them to the correct diameter. It actually worked pretty well. Okay, now onto the rocker box. The sides of the rocker box hold the altitude bearings. They must hold the entire weight of the mirror box, the truss tubes, and the secondary cage. Each of the rocker box's sides is made from two pieces of three quarter inch plywood that are glued together. The front and back of the rocker box is not under that much stress. I just used half inch plywood to hold the two sides of the rocker box together. The last part of the telescope to construct was the ground board. I just cut three circular feet and screwed them onto a circle of one inch plywood, the diameter of which was slightly smaller than the mirror box. Night skies are usually wet, sometimes there is rain, and almost always there is dew. All the wood pieces were stained and covered with four coats of polyurethane.
After three months of work, it's finally time to put all these parts together. Skip to the end of the video if you want to see the final product. The first thing that I have to do for the tailgate is install the collimation bolts. Then the nuts go on to hold the support triangles. Then I clean them with some denatured alcohol and install the support cushions. Now I'm going to install the support cushions. Now I will install the cushion side pins. They make sure the mirror does not come off the sling, which I will install next. Next, the rubber cushions go on. Next, the hardware that holds the retaining pins go on. Next I'm installing heat shrink tubing to keep the pins from scratching the mirror. Next we install the sled. Then the sling slips down through these split bolts. Next, we're going to put some double-sided tape to hold the Kydex to hold the triangle. The fan gets installed next, and that helps the mirror achieve equilibrium on cold nights. This is the back of the completed tailgate. And this is the front. Go ahead. Now I'm going to start putting the secondary cage together. The first thing I'm going to do is mark the center of the secondary mirror. Now we're going to install the secondary mirror in the holder. Now I have to drill the holes for the spider and the struts for the secondary cage. Install the focuser board and the finder scope board in the secondary cage rings. Now I'm going to attach, attach the struts to the secondary cage.
The secondary cage structure is now complete. Now I'm going to put contact cement on the interior of the secondary cage to hold the light baffle. Before we put the Kydex light baffle on, we need to put two sided tape on the interior of the Now I need to drill through the Kydex to install the spider. Now it's time to install the spider into the secondary cage. install the truss tube connectors. And now it's time to put the focuser on. Now comes the final piece for the secondary cage, the secondary mirror. This is the altitude bearing. Earlier I attached glass board to it and now I'm going to attach it to the mirror box. Alright, I use a template to drill a proper hole in order to properly connect the um, holders for the truss holder connectors to the gear box. Now I'm going to put contact cement on the bottom of the rocker so I can attach the glass board. Here's a trick for aligning contact cement. So the surfaces will align as I'm ready. So I just need to pull this first rod out so the ends will meet. the surface down. It's time to put the azimuth Teflon pads on the rocker box.
These furniture pads keep the mirror box from banging against the rocker box. Because the telescope weighs over 100 pounds, I've decided to put wheels on it so to move it around. Now it's just time to attach the ground board to the rocker with the pivot bolt. Now it's time to put the azimuth teflon, teflon pads on the ground board. Now it's just time to attach the ground board to the rocker with the pivot bolt.